Today on the Freezes. After camping on the Beartooth Summit, we're leaving it all behind for Cody, Wyoming and the East Yellowstone area. What do you get for your money out here? We'll show you three spots and one that will save you a ton of cash. So let's not delay and let's jump into today's episode. We are turning off of the Beartooth Highway and we are heading towards Cody, Sunlight Basin. We never actually spent much time on the east side of Yellowstone. Um, the first time we came here we stayed on the west side. I'm not really wanting to leave the Beartooth because we do love it, but it is going to get cold and we know we're going to be forced out of places. While the Chief Joseph Highway may not be the Beartooth, it's a fantastic alternative if you're in the area and the Beartooth is closed. We were in this exact spot just a few years ago. Little did we know we'd be out here living it. On this exact rock right here, standing right here. To us, the Chief Joseph Scenic Byway is very impressive. But hey, we might be biased. This place is pretty sentimental to us. Pilot Peak, it's been wonderful, but it is time to move on. Well, we just left the fog and everything, and the freezing cold, and... And then look at all these flipping rocks that must have came down from that. entrance of Yellowstone. Oh man, look at that. That is amazing. How neat. Oh my. It is gorgeous over here. Down there looks to be a huge river gorge. Wow, how cool. Exactly. But this is bizarre. I feel like we're in an underground railroad. Uh, yes, I am still wearing my sunglasses in this tunnel. I don't know why. It's creepy. Wow, look at this dam. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty out here. We think we're just going to call this campground home started raining on us and the dispersed camping don't seem as plentiful as we thought. All right, we went ahead and settled on Three Mile Campground, which is the closest one to the park. Maybe in here getting ready for the Starlink, getting ready to pass it through that window to me. Come check out our spot. There's a little picnic area. It's actually a really long spot. But we got the mountains over here and plenty of parking behind. There is no water. The water station that they had is uh, bagged up with a grocery sack around it. So that would pretty much tell you there's no water and no dump for that matter. So we have a couple more days on this cycle from the summit. Since we didn't do a full seven to eight days out there, we still have, you know, three to four more days of fresh water. We have plenty of gas and propane for energy. Way stocked up on that before we got close to Yellowstone on purpose. A Starlink should have no problems. We got the bear box. We never use that though. We already have our hard shell here and the truck. Everything's still working good with the battery box. The new cloth access for the propane is working good as well. We had to switch to that because you can't lift up the plastic and it hits the top of the generator tray. So I think we're gonna finish setting up here. We're probably gonna head into the park to check some things out. Quick little breakfast in Old Faithful Lodge. Well, four dollar cinnamon roll. Look at the smoke around Just like the pictures. Full-time, all-time life is even hard on Sergi. 
He's got some hurt paws. Poor baby. We are leaving our three mile campground. We were only here for two nights. They didn't offer anything and also their water fill station was not working either. But we're going to Buffalo Bill. <clears throat> we drove by it the other day. It was gorgeous. We had no idea what to expect. Um, again, only for one night, but maybe we'll extend that, who knows. Um, being last minuteers like we are, they only had three spots available and they were all only available for the night. And we don't need to go into Yellowstone every single day. There's so much to explore and that's what we're out here for. As long as we can find the bears, we're good with it. We are at Buffalo Bill State Park and they have two different areas. And this is Buffalo Bill North. We are way early. Check-in's not until 3. We're going to see if our spot's open. Fingers crossed nobody is in our spot. And we can take it. Alright gang. We're right outside of Buffalo Bill State Park. I'm at a little day use area. A lot of the times our solutions on these move days when we need to cram one in during the middle of the week. We end up using some of these free spots like this. This is just uh, one of the, here let me show you. Uh, the Shoshone National Forest pull-off. So we just throw the Starlink up here. Starlink's on the slide on the other side of Johnny there. I actually just was able to get our latest video posted this morning. So Starlink comes in really, really handy when it comes to that. The check-in at Buffalo Bill is like three o'clock. Check-out at three mile was uh, noon or 11. Either way, that puts us in a pickle for Darien's work. So what we do here at these spots is we make that connection for Darien's work and then we wait for a break or a lunch and we will try to move into Buffalo Bill. It's not too bad, it's not ideal. I mean, of course, we would rather be in our own spot. The way that we have our setup right now, this is exactly the reason that we have this is so that we can be this mobile. We can stop here, throw the Starlink up, get some business done and move on down the road. Or like this where we we have to wait for check-in but you have the, the lithium batteries you have the converter charger for your AC power and some sort of a power source you can do this stuff Wow check out this Jayco Woo wee that is a looker So we're back at Buffalo Bill for the second time today and it's a gorgeous park and all. You know how we are about the fees. We just got handed to us the biggest one yet. They want to charge us $32 to park the Forerunner here. It's uh, Disneyland or something? $32 for the vehicle because we're out of state. It was 50 bucks a night to stay here. The only offer, electric, that's it. Um, we don't have any water. There's a water fill and there's a dump station, but that's it. That is $83 to stay here for one night. We consider three or more hours between check-in to check-out excessive and not at all warranted in any situation we've ever seen personally. We do our best to avoid places like these. Buffalo Bill State Park, absolutely insane. <laughs> are packing up to leave. Brian's outside getting everything ready. We went last night and found a forest road that we're gonna go check out. Just south of the North Fork campground is Stagecoach Trail. This road leads you to a great free camping location called Sheep Mountain Trailhead. We had great access to the reservoir in a few different locations. And the Stagecoach Trail is a great scenic path to hike, bike, or drive. We ended up staying at Sheep Mountain for seven days. Based on what we were paying for the previous site and extra vehicle fees, we saved ourselves over $500 staying here. Minus the electricity, we had the same views as before, and I would argue better water access on this side of the reservoir for what we wanted to do. Sergi's finally swimming in the Buffalo Bill. For free. That's right. One thing that we do to help us roll up on a location in confidence is a quick check with the state BLM website for a list of rules. This helps you stay compliant and prevent a possible ranger door knock or sticky note. 
We were alone for the most part, however, we did share this spot with a nice Canadian couple for two nights and a herd of cattle one afternoon. Just a normal day in Wyoming. They got the cowboy and the sheriff. Naughty cows. Our Sheep Mountain Trailhead. We were here for almost a week. We had an awesome view. Look at our surrounding area. A view of Buffalo Bill Reservoir. And all of this was completely free. We had free range cattle, horses, we saw a big buck. A super nice ranger came out. I mean, look at it. Anybody would die for that view. And we had it for free. We're in Wyoming right now, and that uh, totally reminds me of Utah. Can't wait to get back there this year. If you liked today's episode, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our upcoming locations. Darren and I want to thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.